Hey everyone and welcome to the start of another reading vlog. So in this reading vlog I'm going to be reading Crown of Gilded Bones by Jennifer L. Armentrout which is the third book in the From Blood and Ash series. I wasn't actually planning to vlog myself reading this book but I read the first 100 pages and it was a lot. It was intense and so I knew that I was going to want to talk about it but that leads me on to my next point which is this vlog is full of all the spoilers for this entire series. So if you haven't read any of these books yet then you might not want to watch this. I mean unless you don't mind spoilers, in which case please carry on. But yeah, this is going to be a spoiler filled vlog. I knew that because this is the third book in a series, there wasn't going to be any real way for me to talk about things without spoilers. So yeah, hopefully that's okay. Hopefully you enjoy the vlog. I did just want to quickly recap A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire because that book was intense. Those last two to three hundred pages, there was a lot that happened, but at the very end of the book we learned that Poppy may be descended from the gods. I can't actually remember the details. Poppy and Hawk had just arrived in Atlantia and Poppy was led aside to this temple where she was attacked because some of the people in Atlantia don't know whether to trust her because she was raised by the Ascended and she was the Maiden, so she was attacked and because of that she released this power, which yeah we think means that she may be descended from the gods. But yeah, that's all I really want to say for this intro. So as I said, I hope you enjoy this vlog. The next clip you'll see will be me from a few days ago after I just finished the first 100 pages. So I'm around 100 pages into The Crown of Gilded Bones and I don't know how I feel about this book so far because so much has happened so quickly and it's been very fast paced that I'm struggling to process it all. First of all, we think that Cass and Kieran and everyone might be dead. I mean, I didn't seriously think that they were going to be dead but obviously it turned out that they're fine. Then Poppy is kidnapped by Alistair and we think that she's going to be handed over to the Ascended but it turns out that she's not and that she's rescued again which felt a little bit repetitive, I'm not going to lie. I've just got to the part now where Poppy has been shot and it looked like she might die although I knew that seriously she wasn't actually going to be in any real danger because it's literally the first 100 pages of the book but I think Cass is now turning her into into an Ascended, which seems like a terrible idea. I do not know what is going through that man's head. Seriously, I don't understand what is going on in this book so far. It's really, really messing with my mind because even though I like drama in books, I do have a limit where I find it starts to feel a little bit cheesy. And so far, some parts of this book have felt very, very cheesy. So I'm hoping that that will settle down as the book goes on. Hello, so it's now the next day and I decided not to read any more last night because I was a little bit stressed and I felt like I needed to calm down because this book so far has been a lot more intense than I was expecting. I mean the last few books were intense in places but they had a much slower build up and so I just needed a little bit of time to calm down but I am feeling a lot more calm now. I've read the next chapter and it's looking like Poppy hasn't actually ascended which is interesting. Going to be interested to see what actually has happened there. One thing I do really love about these books is the dry sense of humour. So there was a scene just where Poppy woke up and she has this thirst for blood and she goes for Kieran and Castile says something like, please don't do that because otherwise I would be really sad. And just the delivery of that line, and there's been a few lines like that throughout the whole series, that just, it makes me laugh. <laughs> Kieran is still my favourite character. I don't know if I've actually mentioned that on my channel or anywhere because obviously he's not really in the first book that much until the end and so I haven't wanted to say in wrap-ups and stuff that I love Kieran, he's my favourite character because I feel like that could be spoilery for anyone going into the books but yeah Kieran is my favourite character. I love that he had a much bigger part in the second book and I'm hoping that he has a much bigger part again in this third book. I still love Poppy and Hawk together but I just really love the dynamic between the three of them. So yeah, hopefully I'm going to get through a big chunk tonight. I don't want to feel like I'm rushing this book. I do want to take my time to a certain extent, but there's something about the writing and the world that just, when I start reading, I find it really hard to put down. Okay, so I'm around 25% of the way through now, and I wanted to try and talk out what's happened so far. I don't want to do a massive info
info dump, kind of like what Jennifer L. Armentrout does in these books. But I wanted to try and go through what has actually happened so far, because for some reason, I really struggle to hold the history and the mythology of this world in my brain. So far, we've learned that Poppy may be descended from Nyctos, I think that's how you pronounce it, who is the god of life and death. And she's also possibly descended from King Malak, who is the guy that created the first vampire, or Vampire. I always pronounce it as vampire. I don't know what it is, but I always read it as vampire. So I know that it's vampire, but if you hear me say vampire, hopefully you still know what I mean. We think that she might be a deity or deity. I don't know how you pronounce that word, but we're not actually really sure right now what she actually is because of everything that's happened. But she does now have this bond with the werewolves and they are sworn to protect her or they have this internal instinct, which means that they will literally die for her. The main reason that she was kidnapped is because there's this prophecy, or I don't know if there's actually a prophecy, but there's this brotherhood of protectors who think that she's a threat to Atlantia because her ancestors were very destructive they think that she might go down that same route. One thing I wasn't sure on at first was that with everything that Poppy's been through already in this book, she didn't really seem that bothered by any of it. She seemed absolutely fine. Yep, she nearly died, but she didn't seem to care. However, we are now seeing that she's having nightmares and she's trying to process everything and especially what Alistair said to her. She keeps thinking about whether it might be true. I feel like a lot of my comments on this book so far have been quite critical, but I I am really enjoying it. I'm racing through it and it is keeping my attention. I'm definitely not bored. Good morning. So I didn't read as much as I was planning to last night, but I have noticed that the pace has definitely slowed down a lot, which I enjoy. I like the slower moments to break up the action because you get that really good character interaction. And that's what I'm here for. That's what I like about these books is the banter and the playfulness. And there was a very steamy scene just now in a shower, which was pretty good. <laughs> what I did want to do is try and make a bit of a prediction around Ian because Poppy has been thinking a lot about her brother and his situation and whether he has ascended in the sense that he's now a vampire or whether he's more like her and I don't know. I think it would be very unrealistic if he spent so much time living with the ascended for him to not share their views. I think that when him and Poppy do eventually meet they're not going to be on the same side. When you think how Poppy reacted when she learnt the truth about the Ascended, I think that there might be a similar situation with Ian. I don't know, but it is going to be really interesting to see, first of all, if Ian actually appears in this book. I don't actually know, is this the last book in the series or is there going to be another book? I do hope that we actually get to see Ian in this book because he's obviously very important to Poppy and we've heard about him so much, but we've never actually seen him on the page. So I have this image of him in my mind that I've built up obviously based on what we've heard of him. So it'll be really interested to see whether my image of him matches how he actually is. Poppy and Kieran are so cute together. I really love how their friendship has developed throughout these books. At the moment they're trying to work out this bond between the two of them and how they can now communicate telepathic telepathically. Why can't I say that word? Every time that Kieran takes the mick out of Poppy it just it makes me laugh and every time he's protective over her, it just, it melts my heart. I do think that there's a huge difference between the way that Kieran treats Poppy and the way that Castile treats Poppy, because I feel like Castile is very, very overprotective. I'm not usually a huge fan of males that are very, I will die for you, and that make these huge declarations. I do find it a little bit cheesy, but I love the way that Kieran is more subtle. Can't remember if I actually mentioned earlier, Earlier, but I had a dream last night about vampires and werewolves, which was a good time. It was fun, but I, I think I'm obsessed and I need help. <laughs> okay, so I spoke too soon before because Kieran and Poppy are now having an argument over the way that Kieran handled the attack from the Unseen. He tried to get her to stay inside and stay away from the fight, which we know that Poppy is not going to do that. She has proven time and time again that she knows how to handle herself. She doesn't need to be protective, but 
protective? Protected. However, I do still stand by what I said earlier. I think that the way that Castile is protective over Poppy is very different to the way that Kieran is protective over Poppy. And I like that. I like seeing the differences between the two. Hey everyone, so I'm around halfway through now and I am really enjoying this book so far. I'm loving everything that's happening. It's keeping me engaged. I've just got past the beach chapter and that scene, which was a good time. It was all good. However, what I'm struggling with at the moment is the plot and the fact that there isn't really one. And I did feel a similar way about A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. However, with book two, I didn't mind it so much because you had this great slow burn romance and it was very much focusing on the relationship and seeing that develop. However, with this book, I was expecting just a little bit more because Poppy and Hawk are married now. And so even though you do still get a little bit of tension, it's not as much as the previous books. Obviously, their dynamic is completely different. I've just looked down at my notes and one thing that I did write was, oh great, another info dump because this series in general I do find can be very info dumpy. I think I mentioned earlier in the vlog that I really struggle to hold the history of the world in my mind and it's not that I'm not understanding everything, I am, and whenever something is mentioned, something is revealed, I do understand it but I have to really really dig deep into the recesses of my mind to pull out the memory of what it relates to. It does look like Cass has now found finally accepted that when his brother is rescued, or if his brother is rescued, then he's not going to be in any fit state to rule. And so that might fall to Poppy and Cass. There was also that scene in the museum with the painting of Nyctos and how he had these two large cats with him. And apparently that's what they used to do with portraits of him, is draw these cats to represent his children. And Poppy had that memory of when she was a child and she came across a very large cat that looked like these cats that was being held captive by the Ascended and so I don't know if that's going to become important too. Okay so we've had a lot of plot twists in this last chapter which I didn't see coming so loving that. The Queen has just revealed that the Atlanteans are planning to go to war against Solis and they aren't planning to show any mercy. They're planning to kill all of the Ascended but Poppy disagrees. She doesn't want that. She wants to try and negotiate with them because her brother could be an Ascended and she doesn't want to see him killed. The only way that Poppy and Cass could prevent this war is by becoming the King and Queen. However, the Ascended, we've just learned, have arrived at Spes end and they're claiming to be led by a guy who is claiming to be Poppy's brother which didn't see that come in. I do have a theory. I think that Malak is Poppy's father and he's being held captive by the Ascended. I think that he might be the cat that Poppy saw when she was a child. Don't have any theories yet though on who Poppy's mother is. Good morning. So it is currently Friday and I don't work Friday so I have the whole day free and I'm planning to hopefully finish Crown of Gilded Bones today. I think when I checked my Kindle it said that I've got about two and a half hours reading time left. I don't know how accurate that is though and I don't want to try and finish it in one go so I think I'm going to read a little bit this morning and then take a break, have some lunch, go for a walk and things like that and then finish the rest this afternoon or evening. So yeah, really excited. Okay so we've met Ian and we know now that he's definitely an ascended, he's got the eyes and everything but he, before he left he gave Poppy a hug and told her that he knows the truth and that she needs to wake the god Nyctos. So yeah, really enjoyed that scene. That, that was intense. <laughs> There's also a meeting in two weeks time to try and stop this war that's brewing. So it's getting good. It's getting good. I'm liking it. Okay, they're talking now about how they're going to have to pass into Elysium to wake the god Nyctos. And they said earlier that only Poppy would be able to possibly pass through the mountains because she has the blood of the gods. So could we be about to see the joining? Because would that mean that Kieran and Castile could also pass through? I don't know if I'm right, but it's, it's a theory. 
Maybe. <laughs> I think I forgot to mention earlier that we learned that Willa Collins is actually a real person. So she's the woman that wrote The Smutty Diary and she also sits on the Council of Elders, which is why Poppy and Castile have just met her. And it turns out that she's the woman from The Red Pearl, which is the tavern in the first book, like the very first chapter. So... I thought that was kind of cool. I didn't see that coming. So I've got less than 100 pages left to go now. And we've just been reunited with Tawny. She's alive. She's not an Ascended. So that's good. I did like Tawny in the first book. So it's nice that she's now back in the picture. And then also we have found out that Malik, so Cassie's brother Malik, there's two Maliks, it's really, really confusing, but he is not being held captive. He's with the Queen and I don't really know what's going on there. So gonna keep on reading. If I don't do any more updates before the end of like before I finish this book it's because I'm in the zone now and I want to get it finished but I will do a final update with my final thoughts once I'm done. Hey everyone so I am here to wrap up the vlog because I finished reading Crown of Gilded Bones and I enjoyed this. I think I'm gonna give it four stars because it's definitely not my favourite in the series so far. What I really loved about this book and what I love about this series in general is definitely the characters. I already mentioned that I love Kieran every time he's on the page it just puts a huge smile on my face because he's just so funny I love his dry sense of humor but in this book I also grew to really like Poppy I wouldn't say that I disliked her in the previous two books but I feel like she went on a real journey in this book and especially towards the end she turned into a complete badass and I really liked that disappointed that we didn't get to see the joining however hopefully we will see that in the next book I did do a bit of googling and I found out that I think that there's going to be six books in this series overall which I'm really hoping that the rest of the books in this series aren't as long as this book because in certain places the pacing was a little bit off and it was definitely a bit of a slog to get through. My main issue with this book that stopped it from being a five stars was that in some places it started to feel a little bit tedious and repetitive. So for example with Poppy we kept going back and forth over is she a god? Is she a deity? Oh no wait she is actually a god who are her real parents? Is Ian her half-brother? Is he not related to her by blood at all? And it meant that when the reveals were actually happening, it wasn't that I didn't care, it was more that it just felt a little bit anticlimactic. I don't know whether I'm explaining myself very well, but I was expecting to feel a lot more shocked than I actually was. I was actually kind of right though about Poppy's father being the cat that was in the cage, but it looks like he might be Malik's twin rather than Malik himself. I feel like I need a bit of a history lesson and I need a family tree to try and work out how everything is related. So yeah, those are my final thoughts. I don't know if I have much more to say. Hopefully you've enjoyed this vlog. If you've read this book, which I'm assuming you have read this book if you're watching this, but if you have any thoughts and feelings, please leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you agree with anything that I've said in this vlog. And yeah, thanks again for watching. Hopefully this was okay. I know that it's mostly been me sat in bed reading and chatting to the camera, but as I mentioned earlier, I didn't actually plan to film this vlog. It was all a bit spontaneous, so yeah. If you enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you next time. Bye.